Hello, today we're going to talk about monoclonal antibodies and this video is for the higher tier for biology. It's for the biology course only, not for the combined science course. Now, just as a quick recap on the idea of antibodies before we looked at how the body's immune system, specifically white blood cells, will make these things called antibodies and they are special because they have a very specific shape on part of their structure that can attach to what we call an antigen found on a bacterium or what we call a pathogen. So these are very specific for specific antigens. Now monoclonal antibodies are antibodies that are made from cells that are cloned from one particular cell. So if we look at one example of a cell, so this could be a white blood cell, and we clone this white blood cell, all of these individuals from this clone of cells, they are all going to produce a single and specific type of antibody. So they all produce them and secrete them out, or they can secrete them out. Now these antibodies are very specific, so if we just enlarge one of them there, we can see that that area there on the antibody has a very specific shape and therefore it will only bind to one particular protein antigen which, have, which has a shape that fits that part of the antibody. So that means they can target a specific chemical or a specific cell in the body. And we can target specific cells because those cells will have a particular antigen on, their, on the surface of their membranes. I've just called that MABs, shouldn't have really done that, but that means monoclonal antibodies. You should try and use the whole uh, words when you are writing about it. The question then is how do we get the specific antibody that we want? We can't just get some antibodies out of a sample of blood and hope they're going to be the ones we want to attach to a specific chemical. We need to actually get the right antibodies. So the way this is done is by using mice. So we take a mouse, we inject it with a particular antigen that we want the antibody for, and we let the mouse's immune system produce the antibodies for that particular antigen. And the antigens are produced, sorry, the antibodies are produced by a particular type of white blood cell called a lymphocyte. So a lymphocyte is a type of white blood cell and that's the one that produces the antibodies that we want. So there's our lymphocyte that produces the antibody that we want. We have a slight problem with that though. While the lymphocyte can produce the antibody that we want, it does not actually divide very well. So we have a problem. These lymphocytes don't divide and make copies of, the, copies of themselves very well at all. So there we go, lymphocytes don't divide well. So what can we do about that? We can use another type of cell, and this is a tumor cell. And just like it sounds, it's actually a type of cell that we would link with cancer. But in this particular case, it's a type of cell that could be grown in the lab and it divides rapidly, which is exactly what we want. So let's have a look in a little bit more detail how these clones are made. So we've got our tumor cell as we described and we've got our lymphocyte which is our type of white blood cell and we know that the lymphocyte can produce the antibodies that we want but it cannot reproduce or it cannot divide itself very well or if at all. Now the thing with the tumor cell is it can divide very rapidly in large numbers and indefinitely. So it can divide indefinitely but it doesn't produce the antibodies that we want. So it seems to make sense that if we can somehow combine these two together, which we can, those are fused together, sometimes a little bit of electricity is used to encourage the process, we end up with a new type of cell and this is our hybridoma cell. And this can produce the antibody that we want and it can divide itself as well. So there's the antibody being produced and secreted, but it also can divide and make many copies of itself and each of those copies will make the antibodies that we want. We can then collect those antibodies, purify them and use them for various different uses. So we can summarize that on our diagram there. Here is our hybridoma cell and this is the clone or the cell that can be cloned to make the antibodies that we want. So that's our hybridoma and here are our antibodies and that's a close-up look of the antibody there but equally this is a different antibody but you can imagine that would be made by injecting a different antigen into a different mouse 
and therefore we can have pretty much any antibody that we want for any of the chemicals that we want to study, any of the antigens found on the surface of bacteria and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so just a note there about being able to collect and purify the antibody for use. And we can actually make as much of that stuff as we want. Now here on the screen, we have some of the uses for our monoclonal antibodies. There in the top left, we have the use for diagnosis. So one example is pregnancy tests. A woman who becomes pregnant in the very early stages, which will produce a particular hormone, and antibodies can be used to identify that hormone. They can also be combined with other chemicals to change color when they attach to that hormone. A second use is in the lab, and this is often to do with testing blood. So they can, we can use antibodies to measure hormone levels, detect some kind of chemical that we're looking for in the blood, or even detect a particular kind of pathogen. And it works in a very similar way. The chemical or the hormone will attach to the monoclonal antibody. And again, a color change can be stimulated so that we know that particular chemical or hormone was there. The third treatment there, or the third use there, is treatment of, for example, cancer. And we can use an attached drug onto our mono, monoclonal an antibody. You can see it there in purple. And it will specifically find a cell that has the antigen, and it will attach that antigen, and it will deliver that drug to that specific cell and not any other. So one use I forgot to add, and I'll add that now, is we can identify chemicals found or suspected to be present in cells and tissues and it's used in a very similar way to our treatment of cancer but we have instead of a drug on the attached onto the antibody we have a fluorescent dye and the presence of that fluorescent dye when we look at the cells or tissue will tell us if that particular chemical that we're looking for is present. Okay, so the key idea behind the use of monoclonal antibodies is the fact that we have antibodies that are specific to one particular type of protein antigen or a particular molecule, and that has lots of uses because these antibodies can attach to those antigens and molecules and help us with diagnosis, with looking for chemicals or hormones, and also with treatment of certain diseases like cancer. So there's quite a lot of benefits of using monoclonal antibodies, but there are a couple of disadvantages as well. The first one being that they cause side effects in humans. So as a result, they've not been used as widely as hoped or expected. In terms of the side effects, we are talking about things like uh, headaches and nausea, which is a feeling of sickness. You can even have an impact on blood pressure. It can actually cause changes in blood pressure and even up to rashes and fever as well. So these have been some of the recorded uh, side effects of using humans with um, humans, using antibodies within humans. Okay, so that's the video for monoclonal antibodies. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.